Look at all the stars are crazy. Look at all the guys are blind. If you show me real love, baby, I'll show you my I hope you guys are ready because today we're breaking down part one of Paris Hilton's new book, Paris, the Memoir. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie, reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in, everybody. If you've gotten a copy of Paris Hilton's new book, Paris the Memoir, let me know. And if you're watching this with me live, give me your first name and where you're watching in from so I can give you a shout out. Hi, Sherry. It's your first time watching the live. Welcome on in, Sherry. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. <clears throat> Um, Big Kathy was apparently totally bad-ish crazy. Yes, Val, uh, she was kind of crazy. And Paris Hilton seems to kind of confirm that. She does talk a lot about Big Kathy and living with Big Kathy. She did not call her Big Kathy. She called her Graham Cracker. She talks about her, her rocket red hair and her rocket red lipstick. Hi, Sarah from Houston. What's going on, Sarah Bahu? What's going on, girl? Um, love seeing you live, my love. Hi, Aaron D from Philly. Aaron D, I hope you're coming to our live Philly show on April 27th at City Winery with me and the Brav Bros. I hope to see you there, Aaron. Me and the Brav Bros are going to be there. City Winery, April 27th for No Filter Night Out. You can get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. Oy vey, mama mia. Mallory from Oregon, what's going on? Graham Cracker, Char uh, Charmin from Charlotte, D from Montana. What's going on, guys? Okay, so let's dive into Paris Hilton's new book. A lot to break down. Um, let me know if you guys have gotten your copy. If you're listening to it, if you're reading it, whatever the case may be, let me know. Babs from Dallas, I love it. Okay, so the book is called Paris the Memoir. She opens up with a prologue. And here she opens up about her appearance with Christina Aguilera, who is doing a Pride concert. And here she says that she has ADHD, which leads her to losing her phone all the time. She's kind of always late. She's a little bit of scatterbrain. So this is why she loves her husband, Carter, because he's very patient with her. And that when he found out that she had ADHD, he Googled ADHD and is always trying to make sure he can find ways to support her and love her and, you know, be there for her when she needs him. He's always bringing her back to her center and loves him for it because he's very he takes time helping her out. Now, she says that her ADHD is ba basically her jet fuel, that it's what keeps her going. It keeps her curious. It keeps her galloping along. It keeps her, you know, being able to multitask. So she actually finds it, you know, a bit of a, um, even though it's challenging at times, she she seems to like find it helpful to her life in some way, or at least she credits her ambition and her success to her ADHD. And she says that she lives with ADHD. She doesn't suffer from ADHD. She also talks a lot about the importance of skincare, which Kathy Hilton, her mother, taught her a lot about the importance of it. And she says that's why she's able to party so hard and still look so good because it's all about a good skincare routine. I mean, listen, when you're able to, to use dead fetus cells on your face, then, you know, when you're able to to get the best of the best, Paris Hilton, I'm pretty sure skincare is very important. No, we love a good skincare routine. You go, Paris. She does look great for her age, by the way. Despite the partying and the late nights and the constant travels, she does look pretty damn killer. But she says that she knows this book will be hard for her mom, Kathy Hilton, to read. And she wouldn't even be surprised if Kathy doesn't read it at all or doesn't read it anytime soon. Then we get into part one, chapter one. Today, we're going to be breaking down part one, which is chapters one through five. So chapter one opens up with her 21st birthday. And right after she turned 21, the next day, she went skydiving, hungover and all. Something she says that she doesn't regret. She actually doesn't have any regrets from her 20s. She loved her chaotic 20s. And she loved just being able to live wild and free. She talks about her elaborate lifestyle. Uh, her mother very much instilled that in her from a very age. She says that her parents were very glitz and glam, and her mother was very full of sophistication. She says that her mom was all sophisticated, and um, she actually didn't even realize how funny her mother was until she joined Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which is interesting. We have, you know, cute little hunky-dory Kathy Hilton. 
She talks about growing up, overhearing all of Hollywood secrets at all of the parties that her parents would host. She was enamored by the party life and learned all the best tricks from the Harajuku girls at the start of her party days. She says they taught her to always stay hydrated, to always stay pretty, to wear boots and comfortable clothes because, you know, you want to be comfortable throughout the night. And you also want to make sure if you have to climb in somewhere or climb out of somewhere, you're always ready to go. She says that drugs were never really her thing, that she didn't enjoy getting wasted. She didn't enjoy not being present, not at least until later on, but at the start of her early party days, she just wanted to be in the action and she loved being where all the action was. I want to be where the people are singing, dancing. She just wanted to be Ariel with her legs. So she remembers once trying to sneak in her cousin, Farrah. We know Farrah Brittany from um, the new Mauricio's new show about the agency on Netflix. It was buying Beverly Hills. And obviously from Real Houses, Beverly Hills, we see Farrah all the time. And she even talks about Khloe Kardashian. And she tried to sneak the two of them in, even though they were underage. She tried to get them into a club, her and Nikki. And they put on like full disguises and got to the door. And ultimately, they didn't make it in. So she said, you know what? At, at 16, she got some fake IDs. And she said now they were becoming more famous. And so even though the fake IDs didn't necessarily stick, the fact that people were starting to recognize her and Nikki, that made her, you know... It, it helped her break into the party scene at least because she was able to get into the club still. But it's funny because house of Hilton, the author talks about how Kathy used to tip off the paparazzi, Kathy Hilton and how they would talk to clubs and they try to promote the clubs and they tell the press, Oh my God, you have to go to this club because not Kathy Hilton personally, but she, she had people and they would say, Oh, this list of celebrities is going to be at this club. So the paparazzi would go there and they would try, they would make sure again, because paparazzi are all tipped off. I, I talked about that on this week's podcast episode with Tom Schwartz and how, I thought that he tipped off or someone close to him tipped off TMZ and how he had some talking points he had to read. But so the press, even when it comes to, you know, events like this, there's usually somebody that's tipping them off. Sometimes it's the event owner. Sometimes it's the, or sorry, the event, host or the uh, venue owner or the celebrity that's trying to promote themselves. So what they, according to House of Hilton, what they would do is send out a list of celebs that were supposed to come to these certain clubs. And instead of those celebs showing up, it always ended up being Nikki in Paris. So the paps would naturally just take their photo. And eventually this made them socialites because everywhere Paris and Hilton would go, there were paparazzi taking their photos. Very smart way to hack the system, right? But she was also pretty savvy because she even said that back then she knew how to get sponsors to front the bill for all of her lavish parties. So Paris always kind of had that Hilton, you know, business entrepreneurial mindset. And when it comes to kicking off this book, she describes it just like the morning after her 21st birthday on the plane, getting ready for skydiving. And she says, before they jump out, there's a giant door on the plane with big red letters. And the the letters say, door must remain closed at all times. And she said, just like that day, she's ready to bust open this door and let us own in. Then we get into chapter two. And chapter two starts her off. Um, starts off with her talking about her childhood. And she says, from the moment she was born, her life was always documented. Her mother bought a video camera and they filmed everything, which she now loves looking back on. They used to call her star growing up, like a movie star. They just knew that she had that star quality in her. So that she learned a lot from her sister, Nikki, who is a lot better at following the rules than she was. She learned how to, you know, be a good girl, how to be cute and quaint. But she really had this bad girl streak deep inside her. She makes it seem like her father was very hands on. And she makes it seem like her mother was very much a powerhouse, even though her mom was a bit more of a stay at home mom. She had a shop that she would run. You know, she was running the household like Kathy Hilton. She just describes her very much as like a ball buster and her dad also a ball buster, but she seems to speak a little more endearing of her father, Rick Hilton, rather than she speaks of Kathy Hilton. Like she kind of talks about how her and Kathy have like a, you know, a hot and cold relationship, but she has nothing poor to say about her father actually but I feel like that's pretty standard you know with most girls they're very close to their fathers like if they have that parental unit they always end up being you know having being a bit of a daddy's girl endearing their fathers while also having a troubled relationship with their mothers like I feel like moms and their daughters always seem to have some sort of beef she talks about Bethany Frankel being her nanny and how much she looked up to Bethany Frankel because Bethany was such a cool girl she talks a lot about her aunt Kyle 
mentions Kyle a lot, you know, like when they were growing up and Kyle would, you know, film them and Kyle was always there for the events and stuff. There's not a whole lot of mention of Kim Richards unless it's about like her relationship to Kathy and Kyle. Like she's like, oh, my mom's sisters were actresses. Kyle and Kim, you know, starred in this movie together. But she doesn't talk a lot about having a close relationship with with her aunt Kim, which I found kind of interesting because she does speak a lot about her aunt Kyle. But maybe it's because Kyle was closer in age to Kim because isn't Kyle's the baby, right? So, yeah, Kathy being raised in Hollywood that was very strict about throwing them into the business as young girls. She didn't want them to wear makeup. She didn't want them to be models. She didn't want them to act like she wanted to keep them as far away from the business as possible. Paris says that both of her parents were very strict. She says that Nicole was her bestie in high school, Nicole Richie, and that they wanted to be like Kyle and Bethany because Kyle and Bethany were the cool girls and she would, they would embody them as the, the cool girls, as the, the, not the mean girls, but like, you know, Regina George and her clique is what she makes Kyle and Bethany seem. And listen, Kyle and Bethany were what, in their 20s at this point? Like, you know, seeing them, like, yeah, they do seem like they're the cool adults living their independent 20s life. But despite the uber affluence that she was raised with, her childhood sounds fairly normal. She talks about that's hot, and she admits that it actually came from Nikki. Nikki's the one that started her whole that's hot brand tagline, whatever, her signature tagline. She says that she loved it, and so she started to say it more often, and so everybody around her started to say it. So she's like, yeah, I made Fetch happen with that's hot. So that's a Mean Girls reference for those that don't know it. She remembers one New Year's Eve where her family went to Vegas, which already sounds like bad news, right? Her family went to beg Vegas and she and Nicole begged to have their own hotel room because now they were teenagers and they were cool girls and they were like older now and they were sophisticated and they're practically adults, right? So she begged her mom, she's like, just get us our own hotel room and we're just gonna stay in and we're gonna ro- watch Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve and we're gonna go to bed at, right after the ball drop. We promise we're not gonna do anything bad. And so her mom was like, okay, fine. I'm trusting you girls. And so they were like, okay. And then they ended up getting bored by 9 p.m. So they ended up calling these older boys that they knew that happened to also be in Vegas and they all snuck out together. And then Paris and Nicole ended up getting lost on the strip and they went up to a cop and they're like, can you help us get home? And then the cop's like, what do you mean? What are you doing out here? There's a curfew. And if you're under 18, you're not supposed to be out past 9 p.m., which I didn't even know was a real thing, but like, that's a smart thing. But so they came to him and they're like, can you, you know, can you escort us home? Because like, this is not hot. And the cop was not happy with them. And he called her mom and he's like, listen, your little girls are out here on the strip. What are you doing crazy? And so she, yeah. Her and her and Nicole got in a lot of trouble. And then she gets into a lot more like cute endearing stories of her and Nicole growing up. So it definitely shows that they had a real friendship before the simple life began. Then we get into chapter three. And Paris was a bad teen. She's a very bad, bad girl. She says that she and Nicole Richie were major rebels, that they would lie and sneak off into clubs. And she talks about how she was rated the finest girl in the eighth grade. And she loved it. And she loved, you know, the attention that she was getting. But also, she says, looking back, it's kind of weird that, like, there was a finest girl in the eighth grade. Because at eighth grade, you're only, like, 13 years old. And then she gets into the story where she talks about how one of her teachers started to pursue her and made her kind of feel special. And he would like t- he would call her and talk to her and always tell her how mature she was. And then one day he drove up outside her house and he's like, "Is anyone home?" And she's like, "No, nobody's home. My parents are out. It's just the nanny." And so he convinced her to come outside and sneak into his car and make out with him. And so they were making out. And just then Kathy and Rick end up pulling up and they catch them. So then he drives off with Paris in his car and. And Kathy and Rick are freaking out. And Paris is also kind of freaking out. She's like, holy shit, my parents are here. And they just kind of saw me kissing this guy. And like, I'm kissing a boy. And she didn't even realize like the optics of like, she wasn't just kissing a boy. She was kissing a grown man, her teacher, while she's like 13 years old. But he eventually ends up driving back around and dropping her off very abruptly. And she's like, he didn't even kiss me goodbye. Like she like literally thought that, you know, it was worth getting in trouble for and her parents were furious. They got very upset with her. And she was just like, I don't know what you ta- you're talking about. You didn't see me. I was up in my room the whole time. Like, I don't I don't even know. You guys are going crazy. And so they got upset with her, but like they dropped it that same night and never wanted to speak of it again. Probably like letting her know, like, this is not okay. You can't sleep with your teachers, like maybe in college, but not when you're in middle school. Like, that's not a thing that we do. She says that she felt like Shannon Doherty from 90210, the Brenda of her high school. And she's like, I was the bad girl that nobody liked. But at this point, I was willing to embrace it. And then the nuns kicked her out of school. 
So she ended up getting sent to Palm Springs with her grandma, Big Kathy. And this is where we get into the Big Kathy of it all. And she says that she was ashamed for getting in trouble. And now as an adult, she can look back and kind of reflect on how awful that experience was because she at the time thought that she was wrong, but she's like, no, this grown man was the one that was wrong and I should have been protected by him. Like I was too young and naive to understand what was even going on. I was just caught up in the moment and I thought that I was like really into this dude. And that's not even the case because I was too young to even have the mental or emotional maturity to understand what was even going on. He made me feel special. He made me feel like, you know, I was mature and I was cool. And like, you know, I thought that he was genuinely into me and I didn't think that it was some sort of like perversion. But she said that, you know, she felt a lot of shame because she got kicked out of school by the nuns. And then she ended up getting sent to her to go live with Big Kathy. So she's like, how can I not? How would I not think that I was in the wrong when I was the one being punished for this? And nobody explained to me that what happened was not my fault. But she said rather than being a victim, she channeled her inner Marilyn Monroe and she leaned into this narrative of just becoming a siren. She says that she didn't really understand that until she read Marilyn Monroe's, I think it was her biography or her autobiography. I don't think Marilyn wrote an autobiography, but it was probably a biography. And she read the book and she said that there, you know, she learned about how Marilyn had also faced assault in the past and how now she's like, but Marilyn was able to channel that and turn herself into some sort of cultural icon. And she's like, that's kind of where my brain was at. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to embrace this inner siren too. And I'm going to, you know, just embrace that I'm so irresistible to men. And that's how she got through it. And that's how she processed that trauma. Then we get into chapter four, and this is the chapter where she really opens up about Big Kathy, who, like I said, she calls Graham Cracker with her red hair and her bright red lipstick. And she said Graham Cracker owned her hometown. So if anybody was part of House of Hilton Book Club will remember this was the Palm Desert uh, town that she ended up moving to with her third husband, Bob, remember? And then Bob, um, Bob or Tom? No, it was Bob. His name was Bob. And remember, she ended up, she was like, her finances were dwindling and she needed to find herself another rich husband. So she moves to Palm Desert and she gets a house out in Palm Desert. And then she finds Bob and she thinks that Bob has money. And then she realized Bob doesn't really have money. So instead of milking him for his money, she convinced him to sell his house and use the money from his house sale to then renovate her house. This is the Palm Desert house the Paris came to stay in. She had him use all of the money from selling his house to renovate her house. And then in the end, when she passed away, she didn't leave him the house. She didn't leave him anything. Her will only allowed for him to live in the house for one year after she died. And Kim Richards was then the one that had to oversee the house. And she was like, he can live here for only one year. But the will states that he's not allowed to bring any women over, even though Big Kathy was dead. He was not allowed to bring any hoes over to her house. And she didn't put his name on it. She left the house to Kim, Kyle, and, and Kathy. So, and this is how, this is the how, this is Kim's goddamn house, Mallory. Yes, this is Kim's goddamn house. The one that she claims Kyle stole. And it was because Kim needed to borrow, needed some money. She was short on cash. So, so she took some money out of the house. And that was Kyle's way of buying Kim out of the house. And yeah, this was Kim's goddamn house. It was actually Bob's goddamn house because Bob's the one that paid for the goddamn renovations in the goddamn house after Big after Big Kathy, a.k.a. Graham Cracker, died. Anyway, back to Paris and Graham Cracker. So when um, she said that, you know, Graham Cracker owned her hometown and everybody knew not to mess with Graham Cracker, so much so that when Graham Cracker, Big Kathy, found out that there was this boy at school that was being mean to Paris, Big Kathy went and called the boy up, straight up called his house and cursed him out. She's like, you don't ever mess with my granddaughter. She's like, because I'll defend her like a real sister. And so... Big Kathy straight up threatened this teenage boy. I was like, don't you ever mess. Don't you ever go after my granddaughter. So Big Kathy, you don't mess with Big Kathy. And also remember, Big Kathy allegedly also according to House of Hilton, when she found Kyle and Kim's dad, Kyle and Kim's dad was married. And then Big Kathy allegedly, according to House of Hilton, drugged um. What was his name? Ken. That's Kyle and Kim's dad. His name was Ken. And yeah, Ken, right? It was Ken, right? 
I think so. I'm I'm going based off of memory. So if I fuck up any of the names, I apologize, guys. But remember, she uh, drugged his wife because she wanted to, she like had her eye on him and he was affluent and he was a businessman. And so she went and drugged his wife and then followed her out to her car and then slammed and broke her ankle in the car door. Do you remember that? That was crazy. Oh, man. Big Kathy's good times. Graham Cracker. I love it. Graham Cracker is beyond. We need... We need a Bob's goddamn house drink now. I know, right, D? So Graham Cracker told her that, you know, she was going to be mega famous. She told Paris, you're going to be mega famous. A psychic told me so. And everybody's going to know your name. And you're going to be big. You're going to be a star. So she schooled her on how to put on makeup. She took her to get her hair bleached for the first time. Like, she was ready to, to really bring out Paris Hilton. She let Paris go on dates. She let Paris go to parties. She was able to live freely, but there were certain boundaries and certain rules that Paris had to follow. Even though there weren't many, she was very strict about those rules. And those boundaries were not allowed to be crossed under any circumstances. She once tried to lie and go to lie about hanging out at her friend's house. And she ended up going to like a party. And so Graham Cracker ended up tracking her down and gave her a piece of her mind. She went and she knocked on the door looking for Paris and Paris was like, oh no. And so Paris snuck out the back and ended up going home. And then big Kathy went home and she's like, "Mm -mm, Graham Cracker's here. Get over here, girl. Let's go. And so you don't mess with Graham Cracker. She's like, I learned my lesson. We don't mess with Graham Cracker. She talks about how her mom, Kathy Hilton, taught her how to make a man desire you. So obviously we know based off of House of Hilton, Graham Cracker instilled these um, life skills, which is how we'll, we'll, we'll phrase it, on her daughters, Kathy, Kim, and Kyle, on how to get a man, how to attract a man, and how to be desired by a man. And, and so now, big or sorry, now little Kathy, Kathy Hilton, was instilling her own rules on how to de- how to get a man to desire you, but they were very different from Graham, Graham Cracker. Big Kathy was saying, don't put out too easily. He'll want you even more. Make him come to you. She said, don't ever give blowjobs because blowjobs are beneath you. You're Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton doesn't give blowjobs where allegedly, according to House of Hilton, Big Kathy hired somebody to teach Kathy Hilton how to have sex as a teenager. And she also like taught them how to give blowjobs and all of that stuff. So maybe there's like some sort of like trauma there with Kathy Hilton. That's why she was telling Paris Hilton, like, you don't give blowjobs. Blowjobs are beneath you. Cause like maybe because her mom was like, this is what you have to do to get a man. And so big Kathy or sorry, little Kathy was like very much not on that same mindset. And she was going to make sure she, she did differently by her children. But Paris remembered that. And she said, I remember that I'm Paris Hilton and I don't have to give blowjobs and that I don't have to give it up until I'm ready to give it up. So she was a virgin for the longest time until um, she remembers that there was this one guy that ended up drugging and taking advantage of her. I believe her and her friend met these guys at a mall and then they were hanging out with them and he ended up spiking her drink. And at first she was like, I'm not going to take some drink from some random dude. I have a Sprite and I'm good. And he kept like pressuring her to drink a wine cooler and drink a wine cooler and drink a wine cooler. So finally she was like, oh my God, fine. I'll try the damn wine cooler. And so she tried the fucking wine cooler. And then after that, everything became a little foggy and became a little hazy. And she just remembers him telling her, you know, you're dreaming. It's okay. This is all just a bad dream. It's all just a bad dream. And then when she woke up, he's like, oh, how are you? Are you okay? Did you have any weird dreams? And she was just like, I just wanted to get out of there. And she felt ashamed and she felt embarrassed and she became very moody after that. She was a virgin up until that point, but now she felt like she had to, she felt the pressure to give her actual boyfriend to give it up to him. She had been holding out for so long and other people were telling her like, if you hold out forever, he's like eventually at some point going to leave. So she had a lot of shame around sex and a lot of shame around that, but she ended up, she speaks highly of losing her virginity. So maybe that was, it wasn't a terrible experience for her. It's not the, the getting drug part, but the, when she actually decided to willingly give up her virginity to her boyfriend. She opens up a bit about the sex tape and how, you know, a lot of that past trauma affected her with the sex tape stuff because everybody judged her for that. And she talks about Pink and how Pink released the song Stupid Girls, which she said really hurt her. Remember that song? Stupid girls, stupid girls, stupid girls. Baby, if I act like that, that guy will call me back. Porno paparazzi, girl, I don't want to be a stupid girl. Girls with ambition. That's what I want to be. What happened to the girl? What happened to the 
girl uh, had a dream. Wait, what happened to the girl of a dream president? She's dancing in the video next to 50 Cent. I don't remember all the words. It's been a long time since I sang that song. But yes, Stupid Girls by Pink Paris Hilton was not a fan at all. But she remembers losing graham cracker to breast cancer, which was very hard on her. And she didn't want to accept it at first. And she says that Kathy, her mom, didn't tell her until the very end of days. But it was becoming more obvious. Graham cracker was starting to lose some of her rocket red hair. And she talks about how after Graham or when Graham Cracker was dying, she, one, she said, I'm never going to die. And two, she said, you know, every time you see a hummingbird, just know that it's me. And she remembers that. And every time she sees hummingbird, she thinks of her Graham Cracker. She also has a she gives a nice nod to Kyle Richards, her aunt, her show, American Woman. Remember the one with Alicia Silverstone? And she says that that character really embodied her grandmother. It may not have been an accurate portrayal of like what happened exactly it was always clear like it's not a direct depiction of what went down but it like is inspired by their mother and she's like definitely alicia silverstone's character was was a firecracker just like graham cracker did they really call her graham cracker yes blueberry that's what she got i didn't make up that name they called her graham cracker and then everybody else called her big kathy these are not great names like i would not want to be called big kathy or graham cracker like neither of those sound like great options it just, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Stupid girls. Yes, singing Zach makes my heart happy. Aw, some people love my singing and some people like hate my singing. They're like, stop singing. You can't sing. I'm like, no fucking shit. I can't sing. You think I, I'm trying to have a career as like a, a vocalist? Stupid girls. Stupid girls. Stupid girls. Maybe if I act like that, that guy will call me back. Porno paparazzi. Girl, I don't want to be a stupid girl girl so yeah i love when zach sings well thank you i'm glad that you enjoy it graham cracker's cute graham cracker's kind of cute big kathy is not so cute i would never want to be called big zach i don't want to be called big anything like that's just not an endearing title um okay then we get to chapter five and this is the final chapter of the night final chapter of chapter one and here paris is back home with her family after living with graham cracker and she's so excited to be home. She missed her family tremendously. She missed her siblings. She missed being around her parents. Like she loved Graham Cracker, but it was just like, it's a different life, right? From her family back in Manhattan versus living in Palm Desert with crazy ass Graham Cracker. Graham Cracker just needed a little, well, it's funny, she doesn't even talk about Bob. And I believe Bob was around at this time. Bob, her little marshmallow, Graham Cracker's marshmallow. And then she had a little chocolate Hershey on the side. But anyway, she says that she wanted to be a model and Kathy Hilton refused. Kathy was like, no way, Jose, you are not about to be a model. So when Paris fought back and she's like, well, you were a model growing up. And that's when Kathy Hilton was like, yeah, but I didn't have a choice. I wanted to be a singer, but then I got pregnant and I chose a different life. So run and tell that smoke a cigarette. And so she wanted, um, you know, she really wanted to pursue modeling or pursue something in entertainment. It seems like modeling and like runway and stuff like that was really what she wanted to pursue. But, you know, her mom just wasn't having out of it, any of it. And she also says that her mom was really good at having difficult conversations. And in a moment's notice, she would just put on, she would go from, you know, being caught up in the moment to just like, boop, boop putting on her Stepford wife smile. And she said that she, she would just fake her way through the conversation. She would have that fake smile and that's how she would get through it and not let you know that anything was really affecting her. So she said that Kathy is where she learned how to pull up, how to put on her own Stepford wife smile. And that's what helps her get through a lot of stuff too. She talks a lot about her struggle with ADHD, talks a lot about, you know, her struggles with anxiety, compares herself to Nikki a lot, says that Nikki was very disciplined and Nikki was very composed. Nikki was very responsible and Nikki was bossy, but Paris was a free spirit. Paris was a wild child. Paris just wanted to live young and wild and free. So that she was she would sneak out in Manhattan and she would party and this would worry her parents because they were like, oh, my God, Paris, like, haven't you heard about predators? And of course, bad press. Her parents hated page six and Paris is like, I love page six. And her, her parents like, no, you have to look out for predators and page six because they're going to talk about you and they're going to exploit you. She was like, I don't really care. I'm good. But her mom literally had to lock her in her room at night. So Kathy Hilton would have a little lock and she'd be like Rapunzel and she would lock her in the room. And then Paris would have to bribe her little brother to go and get the key. And so he would and he would help her sneak out. He was little. He didn't know any better. Baron, I think it was. 
And so eventually Graham Cracker had to come over and she had to sleep right in front of Paris's bedroom door so that Paris couldn't sneak out. And even if she did have a key, she would have to get through Graham Cracker. And there is no getting through Graham Cracker, just as Bob. He died without a house. Then she talks about the night her parents hired the people to kidnap her and take her to Provo. And she said that it started off as just a normal night. No one acted nervous. No one acted out of the ordinary. It was a very ordinary night. She went upstairs. She was talking to her friends on the phone. And then she went to bed. And then all of a sudden, 4 a.m. comes. And these men come ripping into her, her bedroom, take the covers off of her, start trying to take her away. And she remembers thinking that they were going to rape her, that they were going to kill her. She just remembers being in such fear for her life. And they had handcuffs. And they're like, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. And she chose the hard way. And she tried her best to break free, all as her parents, wa her parents watched from down the hall, which... I can only imagine was even more traumatizing. Not only are you being kidnapped in the middle of the night as a teenage girl, but then you have to like be like, mom, dad, help me. And mom and dad are just like watching. She said that they did have tears coming down their face, but like, my God, how traumatizing. <sighs> Mackenzie Carter Carmen was Pink's song about Paris. It wasn't just about Paris. It was stupid girls. It was about all Paris and Nicole and, and Lindsay, all the stupid girls in Hollywood who were selling sex tapes and doing all that stuff. So it wasn't specifically about Paris, but Paris was one of the main characters featured, you know, that the song was targeting. I would have left by now if you, if it was annoying. I kind of like, I like this kind of singing. Oh, you like my bad singing? Thank you very much. This camp story is truly horrifying. It's not even the camp story yet. It's just the getting to camp when her parents had her kidnapped. So we haven't even fully gotten into the camp story yet. That's what we'll get into further in chapter or sorry not chapter in part two so the book's broken up into four parts so this week we'll do part one next week we'll do part two and then week three we'll do the last two parts three and four because those are a bit shorter so next week look forward to part two every tuesday we'll be here for our bravo book club or a zach pack weekly unpack because we don't always do books sometimes we do documentaries so Yes. And I think we might do a double book club this week. Maybe we'll do a second one this weekend. So, cause I know we started uh Tori Spelling's book. So we'll finish up Tori Spelling's book and we'll be sure to finish up Paris Hilton's book as well. So stay tuned. I think they're both kind of fun. It's kind of nice to like revisit these like polarizing women in Hollywood and looking back at that. We did Pamela Anderson's book. So it's kind of fun to like reflect and look back at this. We love your soul singing, Zach. We love your heart. Thank you, Val. You run such a, a great book discussion. Oh my God, thank you, Miss Dixie Blues. I'm so thankful I don't have any siblings for my parents to compare me to. LOL, no doubt I would have not been the favorite. Um, I mean, I have a lot of siblings and I don't think any of my parents compare them to me or compare me to that. I'm the oldest. So if anything, they're going to be compared to me, but they've all made it very clear that they don't want to be compared to me because they're like, fuck it. Like that. No, I don't want to, I don't want to be compared to Zach. I'm doing my own thing. And so, yeah, I feel like they all kind of do do their own thing. Fear-based discipline is pretty fucked up, especially from people you trust. Yeah, because it like it messes with like your sense of self. It messes with your sense of trust in the people around you. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm realizing my filler has fully dissolved. I got, I need to go and get it touched up. I have a Botox appointment next month to get my Botox touched up. But like, I need to get my like my eyes are are sinking back in again. It's it's hereditary that my eyes, um, that I have like not I guess kind of like circles, whatever. But I feel like I need, and, and these lines are starting to get deep again. Sorry, I'm just looking at myself in the camera for the first time. I'm very vain, if you haven't noticed. I'm very, I grew up in Hollywood. I am very vain. 1990s to 2000s with Pam and Tori in Paris. Yes, like the, the, the golden era of pop culture, right? Like before reality TV really took off in the late 2000s, early 2010s. I think that that's great. Gotcha. Thanks for the clarification, Zach, on the Pink song. Let's look up the Pink song. Um, Pink, stupid girls, lyrics. Let's look this up. Your skin looks tau and flawless in my lens. Thank you, Mallory. That's very sweet of you. Um, stupid girls. Maybe if I act like that, that guy would call me back. Porno paparazzi girl. I don't want to be a stupid girl. Go to Fred Siegel. You'll find him there. Laughing loud for all the little people's stare. Looking for a daddy to pay for the champagne. Dropping names. What happened to the dream of a girl president? She's dancing 
on the video next to 50 Cent. They travel in packs of two and three with their itsy bitsy doggies and their teeny weeny tees. Where, oh, where did the smart people go? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? Baby, if I act like that, flipping my blonde hair back. See, I have the Paris Hilton bleach blonde hair. And it's it's become, I've had it for five years straight now. And people come and they have the little trend and they do the little thing and they do their damn thing. And I'm just like, um, yeah, nope. Um, yeah, nope. We love your 1000 watt smile too. Thank you, Val. I actually just set up an appointment or not set up an appointment, but I've been for the past couple months. Um, I'm finally getting my teeth straightened because I know the internet loves to talk about my teeth. Well, guess what? I'm doing Invisalign. I start it next month, top and bottom. We're going to get it all done. Hopefully, you know, for the end of this year, I was like, listen, this is new year. I'm turning 30 this year and I'm doing this for me, baby, for me. So I'm getting my teeth all straightened out, brand new, pretty fresh. I'm actually going to Ariana. Ariana is the one that, that I got this recommendation for this dentist from. Um, I'm going to her dentist and yeah, we're going to do it. Did the BF sell the sex tape? We're going to get into that in next, in part two, either part two or I believe part two. Um, where the boyfriend gets into that and she talks about how she had to be on drugs in order to get through the taping of it and all of that stuff and how she felt violated and how she claimed she didn't sell the sex tape and nobody sold their sex tapes, right? Nobody sold them. Oh, hey, mama mia, here I go again. So yeah, your hair looks so good, by the way. Thank you, Mallory. Um, I don't remember that. You don't remember this song? The disease is growing. It's an epidemic. I'm scared that there ain't a cure. The world believes it and I'm going crazy. I cannot take any more. I'm so glad that I'll never fit in. That will never be me. Outcasts and girls with ambition. That's what I want to see. Disasters all around. A world of despair. Your only concern is will it fuck up my hair? That's a very real like thing though, Pink. Like we need to make sure make sure that it doesn't fuck up your hair. Cause like sometimes we just have really cute, pretty bleach blonde hair that we don't want to screw up. Okay, Pink, Jesus. So interesting. The pink's like such a rebel, but she here she is doing por porno paparazzi girls. Um, yeah. Do you thing? Do you thing? Do you thing? Do you thing? Pretty, will you fuck me, girl? Pull my hair and suck it, girl. Pretty hair. Pretty, will you fuck me, girl? Pull my hair and suck it. Pull me hair, I'll suck it, girl. Maybe if I act like that, flipping my blonde hair back, push up my bra like that. I don't want to be a stupid girl. Yeah. Go to Fred's single. You'll find him. Oh my God. I have like something in my nose. I promise I don't do coke in Dorit's bathroom. Um, there's like, there's like an inch in my nose. I probably need to shave my nose here. Sorry, guys. When Pink was huge, this song was everywhere. I know. I remember this song. It was a bop. And then she did the music video and she embodied Paris Hilton and Jessica Simpson. And she was washing the car and she was doing the whole thing. And it was, it was, you know, quite the vibe. Um, all right. That's all I got for book club this week, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. It was a fun little throwback. I'm actually thinking of doing... Okay, actually, now would be a great time. Weigh in in the live chat or weigh in in the comments below. If you're watching this live, hit the like button before you head out so you can let me know that you're loving book club. But I was thinking of either doing a separate podcast feed or putting this on the main podcast feed and doing like a book club feed, right? Where it's basically on the podcast. So it's audio only because some people are like, I love the YouTube videos, but it would be nice to have a podcast where I can kind of get your recaps for these books. And so I was thinking of going back and revisiting House of Hilton, revisiting Erica Jane's Pretty Mess, maybe putting this one up there. What other books? Maybe the Tori Spelling book. Like, I don't know of which books. We've covered so many books at this point. So whatever books you guys really enjoyed that you would like kind of a recap on, I'm happy to do that. Um, I think House of Hilton will definitely be the first one I put out. And I will re-record them audio only so you don't get me talking to like people in the live chat and all of that stuff since obviously these are lives I think I'll do like a, a a brief recap maybe like a I'll try to keep them relatively short but get to like the juiciest and most important parts of the books so I'm interested if you guys are, yeah I guess the question is would you guys like a separate podcast feed like no filter book club and then all of the book recaps are uploaded to that podcast feed and then you could subscribe and get all the quick tidbit you know book club recaps 
from me, quick, funny bite, like an audiobook, but like a lot, you know, I mean, these audiobooks are like five to eight hours long. You would get it in like an hour and a half, the full book synopsis, all the juiciest parts. Good night, Lauren. Thank you for joining us. So let me know if you guys are enjoying, if you want that, if you would like that. I think that would actually be kind of fun. We can call it like Zach Pat or yeah, no filter book recaps, no filter book club, Zach, pa no filter Zach pack book club. I don't know. We'll figure out what to call it, but yeah, no filter pop culture book club. That's fun. All right. No filter pop culture book club. Condensed content is always nice. Yeah. Hit, thanks, Sarah. Guys, hit the like button on the on your way out. But yeah, I think I'll do that. So if you guys like that idea, drop it, drop a comment below and let me know what we should call it. And then I'll let you know. Uh, no filters unpack with Zach. Oh, I like that. I like that, Mallory. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for all the love and support. And yeah. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the like button on your way out. I'll be sure to keep you updated. We'll be back next Tuesday with part two of Paris Hilton's new book, Paris the Memoir. Can we still have some fun singing in fire? Yes, absolutely. You'll still get all the fun sidebar stuff. Absolutely. It'll just be shorter and less good. Like all this rambly talk at the end of the lives, you won't get all of that, but you'll still get all the juice, all the tea, and all the little fun tidbits on the side. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to wrap. But I hope you enjoyed your night and I will talk to you soon. All right. Good night, guys. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye.